In this video, I got a cheap hooker. No, not that type of hooker. I mean a surface air breathing system. Diver safety. Please do not skip or zoom forward this short presentation on diver safety. There's things you need to know and it's our responsibility to tell you. The air we breathe is only about 20% oxygen so the illustration that you see above from Wikipedia is wrong. Around 79% is actually nitrogen and the other 1% is other gases. These percentages are important. I'll come back to them in a minute or two. The air pressure around us at sea level is 1 atmosphere or 14.7 pounds per square inch and we refer to this as 1 bar. Again this figure is important. We do not notice the pressure because the am it's ambient and all around us and inside our body spaces too as well as in our blood. If we climb a mountain or go up in an aircraft we notice the change in pressure. As we go up the pressure goes down or gets less we often say, hmm, my ears just popped, or the air up here on this mountain is thin, and that's because the pressure is lower. How does that affect me if I'm just building a hooker? Well, actually, it could have a big effect on you. Please watch on. So the air at sea level is one atmosphere, 14.7 pounds, or one bar. As we dive or swim in the ocean, the deeper we go, the greater the pressure gets because of the weight of water above us. At 10 metres depth, the weight of water above us causes the pressure to increase by 1 bar to a total of 2 bar. At 20 metres depth, the pressure increases by 2 bar to a total of 3 bar. And at 30 metres depth, the pressure increases by 3 bar to a total of 4 bar, and so on. So I've done a little illustration here, a graph, and by the way if you want any of these slides get in touch and we'll get them to you or put them on the website or something. Every 10 metres we descend the total pressure acting on us increases by 1 bar. At 50 metres depth there is 6 bar of total pressure or 88.2 psi. Each bar or atmosphere is made up from the same percentage of gases on the surface we said that oxygen was 20% or 0.2 of a bar and nitrogen was 79% or 0.79 of a bar. If at 50 metres we are breathing air at 6 bar, that's the equivalent of 6 times 0.2 bar or 1.2 bar of total oxygen. And the same applies with nitrogen at 4.74 bar of nitrogen. Breathing compressed air can have funny consequences. Breathing oxygen at a partial pressure as low as 1.2 bar or above, the oxygen becomes toxic to humans. Breathing nitrogen at these pressures can cause nitrogen narcosis, a drunken euphoric state where you can lose consciousness or start behaving, well, erratically. So why do we need to be aware of this with a hooker or surface air breathing system? Well, using a surface air breathing system means that you are breathing pressure relevant to your depth, i.e. at 10 metres you'd be breathing 2 bar. As you can see from the graph above, this line is linear. So if you're only diving at, say, 3 metres, the bottom of your keel of your boat, you're actually breathing air at 1.3 bar. Not in itself dangerous, unless you hold your breath and come to the surface with a lung full of air. However, any deeper and prolonged immersion could be a problem. I'll explain more. Oi, you at the back, pay attention. This is important. Breathing air on land, we get used to the pressure and the levels of gases. These are absorbed into our blood, body tissues and bone and are not harmful. When we breathe air at pressures, the same thing occurs. These gases, oxygen and nitrogen, are absorbed into our blood, body tissues and bone. But the pressure is higher and therefore, compared to the surface, we're absorbing these gases 
at a much higher rate. At 10 metres depth we would be absorbing twice the amount as the pressure is twice the pressure on the surface. Blood, soft tissues absorb these gases quickly and hard tissues like cartilage and bone absorb them slowly. The longer you dive the more it is absorbed. The problem occurs when you come to the surface. The air in your lungs is compressed because you've breathed it at pressure. As you come up from depth, the pressure reduces. The air volume gets bigger. So you must not hold your breath even on a shallow dive. The air in your lungs will expand as you come up. It only takes a small expansion of air in your lungs to cause a lot of damage and we call this a barotrauma. While the blood, soft tissues will also off-gas the extra volume of gases that you have absorbed, cartilage and bone take longer. The longer and deeper you are, the more gas has to come out. If these gases form bubbles in any part of your body, they are serious. Divers call these bubbles the bends. A bend in your lung, heart or brain will probably kill you or leave you seriously injured or paralysed forever. Shallow depth boat cleaning is reasonably safe, but any deeper without having specific training, knowledge and experience and knowing the risks is just plain stupid. So cleaning your boat, okay, but any deeper, just not on. If you want to go deeper, go to a reputable sub-aqua club or a facility where you can learn how to dive properly. Uh, while I was editing the hooker video, I was thinking about how uh, gases are absorbed into the body. Um, and specifically, it, it's blood which, which takes up gases, uh, and then soft tissue, and then bone, in that order. And this is very similar to the way that water is carbonised, or a soda stream works. Let's talk about gases in suspension. This is a bottle of carbonated water, you know, like you'd get from a soda stream. It's very much like your blood when you're diving. Because you're breathing compressed air, you're having a lot more of those gases absorbed into your blood. You can't see them when you're diving, you can't see them here in this bottle. But if I was to come up very quickly from depth, or release the pressure, we, you can see what happens. Bubbles start to form in the liquid and that's exactly what happens when you've come up from depth, when you've been diving. So with your hooker you're not likely to be diving down to 20-30 metres and that's the point that I'm trying to make. These hookers are designed for cleaning your boat, cleaning your swimming pool, very very shallow depths but the longer you dive the more gases are going to be absorbed into your blood or into your soft tissues or even your bone and it's when that pressure is released when you come up that the bubbles will form you don't want bubbles in your blood do you? let's get on so this is our uh, hooker system uh, all the bits and pieces that we've bought uh, what I'll do is I'll just run you um, through these the first thing is uh, this is an oilless compressor, so it uh, compresses air, puts it into this cylinder here, um, which is five liters. That's five liters at ten bar, ten atmospheres. Um, it has a secondary valve here, a uh, gauge here, and the primary gauge tells you how much pressure is in the cylinder and the secondary one tells you how much pressure you have in your line and you can adjust that here and we're going to be operating at about two bar so quite low pressure um, that's a valve gone um, so it's 1.5 horsepower which is about uh, 1150 watts something like that and it will run either from our uh, generator or it will run from our inverter so we can use solar power to charge our batteries and run our inverter so basically we can use this at anchor either using the generator or using solar power via our inverter 
the next thing is this hose now this was quite hard to get hold of um, this is a breathing air line um, for air or water uh, and it works up to 21 bar um, and it's rated at 21 bar at 20 degrees Celsius so it's a it's get that in there so it's a reinforced hose with an inner and outer and a woven braid around the outside now this this hose is food grade that's breathing grade um, the reason that you have to use that we well don't have to use it is that ordinary PVC hoses give off hydrocarbons um, and they give off a nasty smell uh, as they degrade and a breathing hose doesn't so you could use garden hose you can use you know fuel hose but you'll be breathing in all those hydrocarbons uh, over the years that you use it so not a good idea next is this is the hose tail um, which we're going to put into this hose and this is the connector which goes into there quick release connector standard air airline fitting and we've got some PTFE tape just to make those off obviously we've got some hose clips and we have a regulator and the regulator has an unusual thread um, I can't remember what it's called now I think it's MPT um, but that seals with an o-ring on the end and then we have a hose tail for that which has got the same thread in there so we're going to put all these together oh well, one thing that I didn't mention was was this so this is a five micron fuel filter um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that in the line and the idea of that is that should something uh, particulates come through the compressor it's going to get stopped by this filter uh, and I won't be breathing it in now it's not absolutely necessary but it's just an added safety feature um, you can you know obviously there's air coming in there's a little gauze filter inside here which you can clean out but what I don't want to do is to be breathing bits of whatever whatever the compressor is uh, putting in um, you can put a moisture trap in here as well if you want to um, and that, again they're cheap as chips but it's not necessary uh, I'm just putting a, that filter in there for a, a little extra safety so let's get this put together I'm just uh, boil a kettle of water put that in there for a few minutes And then we go slide that over there give it a chance to cool and then we're going to put a jubilee clip those clip on there uh, ptfe tape and we're just going to wrap that carefully around there there we go and then that will screw on there let's get a couple of spanners and do that up So this doesn't need to be super tight just pinch it up and there we go and 
the next thing we want to do is to put that one on there and what I'm going to do is just slice this off to the bigger diameter grab our kettle of water again just to warm that tube this time I'm going to need to put the pipe clip or jubilee clip over there first and then slide that on. See how easy that is when you uh, just warm them with some, some hot water. Okay and then we're going to do the same on the end of this hose here. Put that one on there Obviously we'll put a Jubilee clip on, hose clip on there. That one will go on there when I've heated it up. And then we'll do the same on the other end of that hose there. Okay, I'll just carry on with that off camera and show you when we're done. I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing hose clips up. Okay, we're on the home straight now. All I've got to do is connect the demand valve to the... Uh, to the hose. I didn't like the end of that hose, it was a little bit damaged, so I've just cut uh, 20 millimeters, three quarters of an inch off. That one's all on there. Now, one thing I didn't point out earlier is you want your demand valve to have a swivel in it so this hose can go round and you can move. Some people actually put a swivel in here, I don't think it's necessary. Um, we're going to have plenty of, of line, so we don't need the swivel. And all I've got to do now is push this one down and let that o-ring seat into the bottom of that fit in there okay and this just gets nipped up no more than that it's an o-ring seal and there we are all done okay let's uh let's plug this in and charge up our, our cylinder and one of the things this has got on it actually it's going to be quite handy it's got a tire inflator not that our boat's got wheels but we've got uh, two fold up bicycles and also we've got a little fitting here that we can blow up uh, fenders and lilos and inflatable toys etc okay well you can see there what we've done I've uh, let's bring the camera over I've set that to about 1.5 bar because that's all we're gonna need I can hear a little hissing that's just coming from that one there Now, demand valve is exactly what it says, invented by Jacques Cousteau. What it does is there's a diaphragm in the front there, and it allows you to breathe uh, compressed air um, at the ambient pressure. Um, so that's the pressure of the water around you. Um, when it's fitted to a first stage, um, the demand valve can actually produce air at about 130 bar. Um, Let's show you what the first stage is. We've got one here. Okay, so this is uh, my dive rig. This is the octopus. Uh, and the cylinder or, or bottle clips onto here. And the bottle is charged at about uh, 232 bar. Um, there's a pressure gauge here, a depth gauge and uh, you can put a compass in there so what this does is it takes that high pressure air at 232 bar and it drops it down to your regulator or demand valve so i've actually got two on this rig and allows the demand valve to supply you with air at the ambient pressure so if you're at uh, 10 meters it's going to be providing you with air at 2 bar 
and if you're at 20 meters it's going to be providing you with air at three bar so yeah no leaks all works as soon as the water warms up i'll be in cleaning propellers scraping scraping the bottom uh, yeah i'm pleased with that let's have a look at the numbers what did it cost so our oilless compressor we bought from Amazon IT and that was 99 euros. Remember, it must be an oilless compressor. Our demand valve again was 22 euros from Amazon and it came with the MPT adapter to hose tail already fitted. Our breathing air hose was quite expensive. We didn't pay as much as this but it was 25 euros and we had to fish around to find it in the end ordering it from the UK. So this is the type of fuel filter that we used, and there were 5 microns. We had some on the boat, so we just used those. I think we paid about 4 euros for them. And then there was the hose clips and fittings, which were 8 euros. So a total of 158 euros. That's the cheapest hooker you're going to get. Patreons support the making of these videos. They don't support our lifestyle. The money that we get from Patreons and from YouTube goes towards better equipment like cameras, gimbals, headsets and data that we have to purchase for uploading these videos to YouTube. If you're not a Patron, why don't you pop over to our Patreon page, the link's in the description. Or you can use this one here. We'd love to have you on board and Patreons get lots of other things like real-time updates, tracking facilities, they can tell exactly where we are at any given time. Patrons can send us messages and take part in our Patreon forum. We can answer technical questions, get suggestions for them from videos and much more. So if you're not a patron, come on, join the crew. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, video is informative and uh, that you save yourselves a, a few bucks when you, uh, when you build a hooker surface air breathing system. A um, couple of things, uh, Cindy and I are both dive instructors or were both dive instructors and Cindy's got her uh, archaeological certificate as well so So I can dig up old relics Like me <laughs> <laughs> um, What else were we going to say? Um, safety wise, if you are diving under your boat we use and advise you to wear a hard hat or something with a chin strap to stop it riding up and also, and always puts a schnud on which is like a balaclava to stop squiggly things going in your ears and yeah. obviously your nose is covered with a mask anyway and also wear gloves because those barnacles are razor sharp uh, yeah, they are razor yeah. sharp um, and of course if you've got a rope cutter on your prop uh, yeah. you're always going to dig your fingers with it so you know, just, just a few bits of, of general safety um, the other thing that uh, we've seen people use is use a, a a plastic cycle helmet you know yeah. um, under the boat and the just to protect your head if the boat comes down on you or something yeah like that. unfortunately we know of an incident um, 18 months ago two years ago someone was telling us that uh, somebody was actually knocked out while they were under their boat um, by the boat coming up and then coming back down again on their head it knocked them out and uh, unfortunately they drowned um, and we were only told about that a couple of days yeah. ago so you know, those kind of general sensible safety things, you know, you, you, you ought to be doing. So, once again, subscribers, thank you for watching. And Patreons. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, Patreons, you really do make these videos possible. Um, Which we say every time, and I know you get bored hearing it, but, but it's important to us. It's important to us, and, and we really genuinely mean that. Yeah, we do. We've had uh, a couple of people buy us a beer. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You know who you are. I'm not going to. I'm not going to list everybody's names, but you know who you are. And uh, they went. A lot of them went to our website and picked up the free information that's on uh, svimpavidus.com. Um, the what was it? It was the the engine um, service list. Oh, engine service list. Yeah, yeah, the things to check. Well, until next time. Take care. Take care. And Can't say sail safe because nobody's allowed to move at the moment. <laughs> and uh, it's bye from us and bye from Oscar. Are you going to say goodbye, Oscar? No. No, he's not. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.